we are going to tell you about coral reefs. Coral reefs are found all over the world in tropical and subtropical oceans. However, some coral reefs extend up deeper, up to about 450 feet deep. They are usually found in shallow areas, a depth of less than 150 feet. These marine species include oysters, sea urchins, sea anemones, jellyfish, crabs, shrimps, sponges, lobsters, octopus, clams, sea turtles, and mollusks. Coral reefs cover less than 1% of the Earth's surface. Over 25% of the marine species find their homes in coral reefs. Tiny coral animals called polyps obtain calcium from seawater and use it to build cup-like external skeletons around themselves. Generations of polyps create fantastic colonies that appear in shapes of flowers, mountain, and elk antlers. Colonies of different coral species create the living fortresses we call reefs. The largest coral reef formation is the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland in northeast Australia formed around 500,000 years ago. It consists of almost 3,000 smaller reefs and covers an area of 132,974 square miles. Florida reefs, also known as the Great Florida Reef, Florida Reef, Florida Reef Track, and Florida Key Reef Track is the only living coral reef barrier reef in the continental United States. It is the third largest coral barrier reef system in the world after the Great Barrier Reef and Belize Barrier Reef. It lies a few miles seaward of the Florida Keys. It's about four miles wide and stands along the 20 meter depth contour, 270 kilometers from low wave rocks just east of Soldier Key to just south of the Marquis Keys. Most coral reefs live in the warm temperature ranges between 77 degrees Fahrenheit and 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Burning your boats into coral reefs can cause serious damage. Protecting coral reefs depends on expert call, proper vessel management. Understand where coral reefs are so boat doesn't strike them. Even incidentally, people can also damage coral reefs simply by touching them. Contacts with things like Acres and fishing nets is a key way that coral reefs die or suffering damage. Don't anchor your boat on a coral reef. Instead, anchor your boat in an area with sandy bottoms or usually moorings. You could also use an installed buoy instead of an anchor. Fishing lines, nets, and fishing hooks all cause damage to the coral reefs. This is just another reason why it's best to take your fishing elsewhere. Figure out where coral reefs are located before you venture into the ocean. Don't discharge wastewater from your boat into the ocean and in coral reefs. Find an acceptable wastewater discharge facility in the area instead. Don't purchase coral souvenirs. You shouldn't take anything out of the ocean that's alive or buy it in a store. In some countries, you will find jewelry and other souvenirs made out of coral. Don't buy them. It is illegal to sell coral in some countries. Coral can take a long time to grow, so taking it for your aquarium or jewelry box can have a lasting effect that will take years to undo. Red and pink coral is especially prized as jewelry because of its coloring. It comes from deep waters. Don't purchase coral reef fish either. Inquire about marine fish before you buy them in your pet stores. You want fish that are bred in captivity. On little on the beach or in the ocean and in coral reefs, Leaving behind things like fishing nets or general garbage on the beach can harm coral reefs. Drawing litter into the ocean itself can eventually cause the trash to come into contact with the coral reef. When trash is upon the coral reef, it can actually smother the corals. Remember, they are living organisms. Some people see corals as they, they see shells. However, corals are alive and thus they are very substantial to harm. Littering can also cause harm or even kill the fish that populate coral reefs. The technical term for this kind of litter is marine debris. Marine debris also damage other organisms on coral reefs that are necessary for their survival. Some organizations sponsor beach cleanups. If you help pick up other people's litter on beaches, in addition to not litter yourself, you will help coral reefs. Snorkel and scuba dive with care. Many people enjoy snorkeling near coral reefs because of their unique beauty. Snorkelers and divers can also cause serious damage to coral reefs, especially in areas with heavy tourism. Don't ever pull a piece of coral reef off to take with you. They say you should leave only bubbles and take only pictures when you are in the ocean. Remember that you are destroying a living organism if you take a piece of the reef. Practice snorkeling before you venture anywhere near a coral reef so you don't come in accidental contact with it. Stay horizontal in the water and avoid kicking sand or falling around with your fins. Don't swim too fast or use your arms when swimming. If you touch a coral reef, it can cause you harm too. 
People have been cut and stung by quarries. Don't get too close to a quarry while wearing a lot of sunscreen. The oil from this lotion could cause quarries damage. In soft coral, there is no stony skeleton, but the tissue is often toughened by the presence of tiny skeleton elements, known as slurdies, which are made of calcium carbonate. Soft corals are very variable in forms of them, and most are collineal. A few soft corals are stonated, but the polyps of most are connected by sheets. Only scars. In some species, this is thick polyps are deeply embedded. Others are tree-like or whip-like and have central skeleton embedded in the tissue matrix. This composed either of a fibrous protein or gorgony or classified material. The polyps of stony crows have a six-fold symmetry while those of soft crow have eight. The mouth of each polyp is surrounded by a ring of tentacles. In stony crows, they are cylindrical and tapered to a point. In soft crows, they are pinnate while side branches known as pinules. In some tropical species, they are reduced to mere stubs and in some they are fused together in a paddle-like appearance. In most corals, the tentacles are retracted by day and spread out by night to catch plankton and other small organisms. Shallow water species of both stony and soft corals can be zooxanthellate, the corals supplementing the plankton diet with the products of photosynthesis produced by these symbionts. The polyps interconnect by a complex and well-developed system of gastrovascular canals allowing significant sharing of nutrients and symbiotics. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching this Adventurous Kids episode. episode.